Lucas Media, so we got some news coming out of boxing. There's a rumor that's floating around. Roy Jones will be Earl Spence's trainer. Earl, Earl's been going through a lot of changes, right? He hasn't fought since July 29th of last year. After his loss, and I believe off the top of my head, his seven round knock at TKO loss against Terrence Bud Crawford, you started hearing rumors about Derrick James and Earl Spence falling out. Well, not only was the rumors true, but they are also in legal battle right now. You hear that Derek feels like he was cheated out of several million dollars by only getting paid upfront money, not back end money. And Earl was saying that's not true, so Earl's counter suing him. Then it came out that Earl Spence was looking for a trainer as he put on Twitter. Well, he said new home, but then he confirmed it was with, with a trainer. I'm going to be honest. With Roy, I really don't know. I don't, I don't know how good of a trainer he's going to be. I tried to do some research, and I did hear about this a while ago, and I know he was training Chris Eubank Jr., but I haven't heard a lot of top fighters that Roy's training. Now, to be fair, he could be training more people that's coming up, but I haven't really heard a lot, but I do know that Jamal Charlo also said that he was now going to be training with Roy Jones. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. You got to see what kind of trainer he is, even with Earl. Honestly, I don't know if he's going to be the same fighter. We don't know. Earl took a lot of punishment against Terrence Crawford. Now, we all know that you don't leave the ring the same way as it, as when you came in. And then also, Earl's moving up to 154 and supposed to be fighting Fondor. It's not like he's moving up there to get a, a filler fight, to get some ring rust off. No, he's trying to go up against Fondor, who is not an easy opponent. So, I mean, I don't know. We, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Honestly, I wish that they would have been able to work it out. But that's, that's normally what happens. You know, when people are winning, you don't hear stuff like this. But a lot of times you see, as soon as a fighter takes a loss, he switches up. And you'll see them change even managers, promoters, trainers. Usually somebody got to take a blame. Derrick James has been with somebody with Earl Spence since the beginning. Even when Earl was in the amateurs. And Derrick James helped Earl get the WBC belt, the IBF belt, and the WBA belt. So Earl should have rolled with Derrick James in the end. And if it's over money, if Earl owes him money... I mean, I would think Earl would pay him. But also, another thing I was thinking about is we never know. Earl Earl Handlers might have been the one paying Derrick James. So Earl might be caught off guard with it as well. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's it's kind of late in Earl's career. But we got to wait. I got to I gotta see him fight against Fandora. And then I got to see what kind of trainer Rory is to make that judgment. But y'all let me know. If y'all have any information or able to send me any links about Roy being a trainer. Like I said, I did my research, but I haven't really seen a lot. I know he is, but I ain't seen any top people go to him yet. And I don't know, a lot of times, the, some of the greatest fighters won't necessarily be the greatest trainers. And that's another thing that I've been thinking about. But again, you never know. I mean, Roy does have a lot of IQ. He's one of the greatest boxers of all time. The man went from middleweight to heavyweight champion. He should have retired, in my opinion, if he would have won a heavyweight title and he would have been crowned. And he was undisputed at uh, 175 pounds. But I just want to get my quick thoughts about it. Let me know if y'all think that Earl Spence and Roy as a, as a trainer would be a good fit. Again, I got to wait to see. But tell me what y'all think.